difficult not to be together, not to find the time, right, to just connect. Even if we just run into each other at front bar, even if we just, I don't know, just hug, right? Just look in each other's eyes at this, at this moment. And I was thinking about you two a lot because, you know, Steppenwolf is, is based in these like extant relationships, right? That have been going on forever. And, and I want to talk about Wally World for sure. But I also have to take this because I want to talk about you two. And I want, it, I want everyone to know um, this relationship and how, and what it is and how long it's been. And, you know, get a little bit of the, get a little bit of the People Magazine inside edition <laughs> on you two. I'm ready. No, no, no. You are ready. You are ready. You are. Wally World is our third collaboration at Steppenwolf. Mm -hmm. The first time I met got in and it was in undergrad in an acting class and I remember seeing her go up and deliver this hysterical monologue by Josefina Lopez and it was the first time I felt like I saw myself not in me but in someone else and it was a beautiful like a soul um, recognition like something in my spirit said this is someone who's going to be in your life forever in like a really meaningful way. I imagine I'll look back at this, you know, my tenure and go, these two had some of the, like, I'm the most proud. I'm the most grateful for these two and the impact that they've had. I feel like Wally World is a perfect articulation of that for me. And I'd love to, to hear a little bit about that and about how it's going and where you are in the process and all of that. Um, as people get ready to listen to it over Christmas. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, I, I, uh, I'll share a little bit of context and, I'd, and Karen, I'd love for, if you could talk perhaps about your journey with the play, which I uh -huh. think is also surprising and fun, <laughs> which, um, you know, so for those who don't know, um, I was born and raised along the U.S.-Mexican border in El Paso, Texas, Juarez, Mexico. And Karen was also born and raised on the border, different border towns. Different. Opposite but ends we, of Texas, and op yeah. Opposite ends of Texas. Mm -hmm. And I was born on the American side and got in on the Mexican side. And I think that's also very <laughs> telling about our relationship too and where we found each other. It's like, ugh, it's like so, it's just such a weird universe thing. Like it's just so strange and such a beautiful way. But with Wally World, um, it's a, the, I, I call it my Walmart checkoff. And it's um, the play, a play about my mom. You know, I, my mom's worked at Walmart for 25 years and um, has worked Troy up from cashier to assistant department manager of lingerie to department manager of ladies wear to assistant manager to co-manager and to now store manager at one of the largest retail uh, focus Walmarts in the country, which is a huge deal. And her Walmart is situated right off of one of the border crossing bridges. So the majority of her customers are not just from El Paso, they're also from Juarez. And it was important to me because I grew up in Walmart, really. I mean, take your kid to work day. Whenever I was sick, I was, I literally just found a name tag that said Isaac. And when I went back home recently, that, that my mom had made for me because I was always with her at the store. And I think there's something prolific and beautiful and meaningful about these everyday people who had had and have lives that are deeper beyond our understanding um, they're, you know, they're not just the random folks who stock your groceries or who pick up clothes when you throw them on the floor or clean up vomit from toys, but who have meaningful lives with dreams and aspirations and had no idea they would be working at Walmart for as long as many of them have. And, and what brings them all together is um, a profound loneliness um, that I think so many of us share. And what connects them is that they feel less lonely when they're together. And I think that's a big reason why they choose to stay. What makes Isaac special is that he's an incredibly um, collaborative playwright. So there are times where like, I'll just like riff off and he'll write it into the script because it felt natural, it happened, it was in the moment. And I feel like this, we, we just did it this past week, this week, we were all, like all the actors, without Lillian and Isaac, we were all in a thread just being like, this has revived. It felt like we were in an actual room together, as close as you could get to through, through a Zoom. Um, it felt like we were actually creating 
and it, it's also a true ensemble piece. And the way that Isaac writes, he starts to tailor, um, you know, it's not just me. It's like he starts to tailor these characters to the particular person that is reading it, especially when it's, it's a perfect fit. And to me, this cast is perfect. And um, it was a true celebration of each other's talents. Like, I felt like the room was so supportive. Every, like, everybody on the chat was like, yes, that scene made me cry. Or that's, yes. Like, uh, you know, Sydney Charles would be like, I didn't, let's get out of here. They're really acting over here. I was like, I know. Like, <laughs> what are we doing? You know, like, you know it's just like very celebratory um, uh, uh, vibe through a collaborative and creating creation um, uh, uh, room. People need uh, the hope of their imaginations right now. They need to hear stories of um, fairness, mm -hmm. of, of, um, of a ambition towards kindness, and um, they need the, uh, the kind of um, echo of what you two share, which is a beautiful soul that contains all of the possibilities of what we can be, and um, we're all the better for it, and I'm so grateful for you two. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Anna. We're grateful as well. Love you guys.